What are we doing here? <laughs> Ginger beer, not alcoholic. <laughs> Uh, okay, are we all on? Uh, let's see. I've got a lot of people are still muted. All right, so let's do a roll call. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to start with. I'm doing this alphabetically. So Becky Beal. I know I put her on. I know I sent her the link. I do not see her on yet. Linda yep. Corliss just jumped in. Yep. Oh. All right. I don't see Becky. A lot of um, people are muted. Linda Corlitz. Yes. Travis. So I sent him the link. No, Travis, yeah, is, Travis is on. All right, I'm good. Uh, Rebecca Hopper, do I see you here? Yeah. Yep, thanks. Um, Denise Mallet, she's muted. Um, um, yeah, I see her on the list. Yeah. I'm here. Uh, hi, great. Uh, Lynn Manley. Not oh, yet. So, wait, Lynn might be the one I'm missing. I'm going back. Okay. Yeah. I'll All send right. Nancy Newbert. Yes, I'm here. And Joanne yes. Potter. I don't where is she? I'm here. Oh hi. Yeah. Okay. So Becky Beal, are we on yet with you? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got Linda, Travis, Rebecca, Denise, Nancy. Joanne, Joanne. And Frida. I'm, missing, I'm missing Becky and Lynn. Becky Beal and Lynn. Oh, all right, I'll do Be Becky Beal again. I'm pretty sure I sent it, but we'll do this again. Sure. Everything's a little slower now, too. And so while, um, while we're waiting, Chris asked if you guys are all signed in to your Chrome with your school account. Yes. Yes. All with your MSAD 60 account. Okay. Then he said, um, there are three. So if, it should be at the top right of the screen. Obviously, it's not for many of you. If you go to the bottom right that says change layout, there's three dots. Um, it still doesn't have one where oh, everybody can be on it. You can Lincoln, do trial, which yeah. will give you three or four people. But for some reason, you're not getting the grid, and and he's not he's not understanding why. I don't see a change layout. All right, well, down. Down. hang on a second. Let me. It's three little dots oh, at the bottom, right? I had, I, had the, I had the list up, and that that wasn't okay. Okay, then, we have everybody, uh, Becky. Uh, Astrid, we have everybody. Okay, so Becky, you're here, and Lynn, you are here too. Yes, yeah, so I see okay. them. And All then. Right. If it's, yeah, so if you go to the three dots, it's under, it's the top under stop recording. It says change layout. I have sidebar or tiled. I, I'm on yep, tiled. So you're going to go tile. Tiled is as good as it's going to get right now. Okay. It's going to get right now. I'm going to have to figure this out. I don't know why you're not able to do that. I actually see fewer people this way than in my previous layout. <laughs> The way it was before, um, I had the main screen for whoever was talking, and then on one side, a stack of faces. And I had more faces than I do with tiled. OK, well, so if you go back to that, it's that first one that you were at, not the tiled, but the yeah. side layout. All right, well, I don't get everybody, but. Yeah, I get it. I don't, I'm not sure why this isn't working the way we want it to. I'll blame Chris and leave it at that <laughs> for now. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Are we ready to get rolling on this? Um, we're not going to do the flag salute, but um, I guess the first thing we're going to do is the public input statement. Denise, can you read that off? Sure. Um, the first public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input, for example, matters involving personnel. And uh, per the agenda, the way to, I'm just trying to get over there, 
the um, Jen has her the phone on. So if people want to comment, they call 207-676-2234 extension one. Is that correct, Steve? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Do we have any calls? We want to give people about 60 seconds to see if we pick up any. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. And I can just say, you know, there will be another opportunity at the end of the meeting. So if you don't get in right away now, um, there's another chance at the end. I just got everybody's picture magically on my screen. I don't know how that oh. happened. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right well, there. There. Surprise. <laughs> My husband, the computer programmer, calls it the innate perversity of inad inanimate objects. The innate perversity. <laughs> all right. That's been about a minute. Um, all right. Let's move on to the minutes of April 2nd. Any comment? Any questions? All Only right. that it's snowing outside my window and I'm a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good sleeting here. here. Yeah. yeah. Something gross here. Okay. Uh, in that case, can I get a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make the motion. This is Nancy to accept the minutes. All right, Nancy's mm -hmm. made the motion. Who can second, please? This is Becky. I'll second it. All right. I will do a roll call vote. Becky, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Linda. Yes. Travis. Travis, do yep. you hear me? Yep, you're good. Okay. Rebecca? Uh, hold on, wait, no, I actually need to abstain because I left oh. during the meeting. So I need what, to was, what was Travis? I'm having trouble hearing Travis. Is anybody hearing him? I don't yep. see a picture, but I hear him. Travis is abstaining. Hmm. And Travis is abstaining? Okay. Yeah, because he left part way through. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rebecca Hopper? Uh, yes. Denise Mallet? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. And Joanne Potter. Yes. All right. And Rita? Uh, I am also approving, yes. All right. So 881. 8, 801. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, on to the calendar 2019 2020. Okay. So as you saw my, probably saw my letter from the, I don't know, maybe it was this morning it went out. It did. Um, it's it's everything's rolling in together. It's it's if you don't like the it used to be if you don't like the weather in Maine, like I'm looking at these giant snowflakes, just wait a minute. Now it's if you don't like the news in Maine, wait a minute. Um, there was a clarification this morning from the DOE that is a little on the confusing side because it still used the term recommend as far as the brick and mortar schools the actual physical plants being closed but continuing school for the remainder of the year remotely um i had a conversation at the doe level yesterday about that with the commissioner and kind of questioned why that term was used uh the explanation was that there's a significant difference between Cumberland and York County uh, regarding COVID and let's say Piscataquis and, and um, uh, Arista as just examples. And I, I agree that I think one of those counties still has no cases. The other one has one case or something like that. And we've got uh, uh, the, for our state, we're in the hotspot areas. Um, but what is confusing to me is there was previously an all state notification to go to remote learning. So if those counties could opt to do their own thing now, why couldn't they have opted to do it all the way along? Um, why tell them to close if they had no cases at all, or one case or something like that? Kind of interesting. Um, so we're where we are right now, and you probably saw that I emailed a, a student back fairly 
recently to uh, she was pleading to, you know, a senior saying, hey, can we even if it's the last couple of weeks, can we work to keep the school year? The, the, the options open for going back to the buildings. And unfortunately, um, I, I'm not going to be putting a motion before the board to say, would you consider going against the commissioner and the governor's recommendation? I'm never going to ask you to do that because we're in the hot zone, hot, hotter zones for our state. Um, and it, it looks a lot different. Um, the governor's state of emergency expires on May. No. First. April. May, I thought it was May 15. When is it? I thought it was 15. Something's expiring on May 15th. Um, I guess they're good for 30 day stretches or something like that. So if a second one comes up, so if we don't get in before May 15th, you know, if, we, if it has to be after that point, and if we're projected right now to be the last projection I saw, which was the 10 o'clock news last night, that we're still two to three weeks out from the apex of the COVID-19. And if that's the case, then that would put us probably in a situation, sorry? Probably in a situation where the governor would be declaring a second 30-day state of emergency. And if that happens, there's no question the year is gone no matter what. So, um, I wonder what it would look like if if there was a week left and people said, well, let's get back to school and back to try to get back to the new normal. There's no vaccine. We're going to have collections of hundreds of kids together in schools, hundreds of, hundreds of kids and adults. I just, I'm, I was frank with the student, I, as much as I'd like to think we could get back to a, to our old way of normal, I think this is the normal for this year. And I, I wouldn't pretend to imagine there's any case under which we'll see um, a change in status and go back to regular school setting. Is there any I agree. question on that? It struck me so hard to do that, to not, to not follow that policy. I think it's really hard to um, see this in perspective if you're a teenager, yeah. um, but that they will be alive and well and able to maybe go to college in the fall um, or get a get a job or start a new career or you know, you know they'll get on with their lives and they'll it'll be a a really poignant memory that this was they were the class that had no graduation and no prom and I don't know how we can make it up to them but I think yeah. they just have to see the big picture and know that we're keeping them safe. Yeah, so so the, the prom is definitely something that we can't recreate while there's any concerns. Uh, the graduation, that remains to be seen. If we have to do a 40-mile a, a loop around the communities with a, 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 car, a car graduation or if we... Uh, Joe Finley said the other day, just kind of half jokingly, but I kind of like it. Socko driving. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, a lot That's of people, not a bad idea. So people are actually trying to book it for weddings. The socko driving. Oh. Oh wouldn't my. It, wouldn't that be? Yeah, mean, they are unforgettable. They've been um, they've been busy with inquiries. <laughs> nice, nice. So, and, and there are other places that have extremely large parking lots and so forth and could allow for some spacing, but I don't want to preclude those things yet because maybe it, maybe a graduation date gets moved off to July. Maybe it gets moved off to August and who knows? Uh, let's, let, so we're not, I don't want any person listening to say, oh, they've already got an idea of what they're going to do. No, I'm just, I'm just throwing out some ideas that we... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And okay. Kanye just posted that we should do Lee Speedway. 
<laughs> yeah, we could have a checkered flag. Stop and get your diploma <laughs> at the red flag. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's good to see it with a sense of humor. It is heartbreaking for those kids, though. I'm sure. Hey, we got a chance to make something really unique out of this, and we're going to work yeah. to try to. If it has to be later, or if it has to be really crazy fun stuff that no other group has ever done, okay. But we're we definitely understand that. To a 17, 18 year old senior, what that means. And it's not just those, it's not just, obviously, it's not just about the things that seniors are losing. It's about the, the things that, uh, you know, what if you, uh, what if you were supposed to, like in the Lebanon schools, do the Ferry Beach Ecology School? What if you were, um, what if you're a, a kid, oh, my grandson's a kindergarten? He's, he, he's just, He's just so sad about not, he sees his teacher virtually. She's doing an outstanding job. He's he's had a Zoom with his classmates and stuff like that. But how do you tell a six-year-old, you know, how do you explain that? Um, Steve, can we, can we make sure that um, as the time gets closer to talk about graduation, that we have some sort of small committee that includes some seniors so that they feel like there's, um, like that their voice is a part of that. Well, while you say that, let me just check and see. So, yeah, Sam here. Who's on? I don't have a high school person on today, but we will uh, share that thinking. It's probably something I'm discussing, but uh, no, no, just no reason we can't double check that. Another so, factor to continue is that, to consider is that. When you have a big gathering like that with kids, there are proud grandparents and great grandparents that want to attend. And, you know, we don't want to put any of them at risk either because they're that demographic that everybody worries about. Yeah, very, very good point. And if it's uh, if uh, Dr. Fauci is projecting that the I think this is the last I saw was that the apex of this is actually in the next two to three weeks and that um and that is eight to 20 weeks from there i mean we we'd love to think let's get a summertime in let's get opportunities for kids for people to just calm everything down let's get a chance to get in and get buildings set up for the next year let's get i mean there's there's so much there that we want to do i i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that school in september starts the way school should yeah. So we we've got a lot of a lot of things that need to be considered in a very short time frame. So that's the 1920 conversation about calendar. Unless people have questions. Oh, I'm I'm good. All right. Final budget update. All right. So Denise shared a Google Doc with you. Um, let me pull mine up. Let's see. It says. 404. Well, if you go to your email, it's in there. So, which one are we opening? Um, oh, it says it, on the Google Sheets, excuse me, it says 04 slash 9 slash 20 budget update. I've got three of them that say that. Um, go <laughs> to your in. Uh, well, I'm not seeing the name there yet. I see Denise. I see Lynn's thing. I see Travis's. Those little monikers. I see both Denise's. Yep. <clears throat> Joanne's. There are three documents from Denise. No, five. Right. Yep. I shared uh, some other summary documents with you, but the one you wanted to start with says it's an April 9, 20 budget update. Okay. I got okay. it. Got it. Uh, yeah, I see a street is in on that document. Um, then it says plus two others, total of seven viewers. Estrita, Denise, Joanne, Lynn. Yeah. Rebecca, Travis, and Denise. Nancy, 
Yeah, that's what was happening the other day. You were doing the. Uh, yeah, that's what um, was happening today. We've been doing the Atlanta. Linda Corliss, I don't oh. see her on that. People mute if they're not uh, talking. I thought it was. Yes, I'm sorry. Are you talking about the, the, the BCTV? Are you a master? Sure. So, I'm glad I tried to mute the mute. Hey, uh, Estrita or Steve, can you mute everyone else who's not yes. talking? Yes, I hear some. I hear a male voice and it's talking about. It's a mask or something or other. TV downstairs. Downstairs and so forth. Can somebody mute that, please? Thank you. Appreciate it. Again, this is Linda. So, which one is the budget summary? Four nine. Uh, budget. No budget okay. update, Linda. Update. Okay. Yep. Hold on. Thanks for sending the snow down here now, Steve. <laughs> hey, my aim is to please. You should see it up here. You should, it's, 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 it's a blizzard, really. It's amazing. Still okay. raining in West Lebanon. <laughs> North Lebanon, it's snowing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have the TV Give on. it a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah, North Berwick is oh. snowing. So let's uh, everybody hold on for a second. Terry Wright. Huh? Yes. Terry, would you mind muting because we can hear the background going on? Yeah. I thought I was muted. Can you mute me? I uh, have to get out of um, my full setting here. I don't know if I'm that special. Let me see. <laughs> um, I'm not. So no, anytime, I can't do it. Yeah, so anytime I've tried to mute. Oh, you're somebody, muted now. Did you do that, Jen? Good so job. you have to mute yourself. So kind of weird. All right. We're good to go now. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, what you'll see at the bottom of this document. Uh, so this is actually uh, Denise Van Campen. Yes, sir. So this one is the 3.16 and actually the total that, so the where it says employment costs at 390, that should be at 435, 438, right? Um, based on a recent conversation. Yes. On on the most up to date information. Yeah. And then. Oh, no. That will bring. Hold on. Let me do it another way. Okay. Uh. I can type. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. And then. 732. It's fun to watch Denise do math. <laughs> All right, so what I would like you to look at is the last line here. You've seen all of the parts of the budget. We haven't taken anything in or out of there that uh, has not been discussed. Um, yep, nothing up my sleeve. Um, I do have lots of all the documents ready for you. Um, I wanted you to be able to focus on the documents Steve wanted to share with you, but I will be sending you a copy of all of the cost centers and the updated budgets for those. Okay, so where it says final for 2021, this is the final superintendent budget proposal. It says board approved, but that's not the case yet. Denise, it should say final 2021 superintendent proposed budget. 
And so the total there is $42,724,732, the line that I'm looking at, and it represents a 1.26 increase to expenditures, which is less than the uh, contracts alone that we have in place. So I think that represents some significant fiscal uh, creativity and some very, very difficult decisions on the administrators' parts, teachers' roles on um, the central office and on the board's part to date. And the total change in the budget would represent uh, a 3.4% increase for 2020-2021. Are there any questions about the proposed budget? Yes, I have a question. Um, under the medical premium adjustment, it seems like there's a $34,000 increase. Yes. Can you, can you explain that where the premium came in like I don't know, 0.8 below the 3% that we've said? Yes. So one of the other things I do consistently from January through when the board approves the budget is I make action if somebody in the district changes their insurance coverage, I add that in to reflect that. So if we have somebody who goes from a single to a family or a family to a two person, I make those adjustments all along the way. And we did have a couple of changes. So that increase because the, it was more expensive, it increased the medical costs and uh, offset that that small amount that we were saving. Okay. All right, anybody else have any questions? Uh, I just wanna say thank you to Denise for all this work that you put into this. Yeah, You're absolutely. Welcome. You're welcome. And again, to all of you who have managed to make this work, um, the numbers didn't look so hot and it's not quite as painful as I would think it would be. Still painful, but it could have been worse. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess we are ready to move on then to the board budget adoption. Is that a straight up vote? That's a, you know, somebody makes a motion as to what kind of thing that they would like to put forward to the citizens. Um, as you're thinking about that, a couple of pieces to uh, have in mind is that the May 14 budget validation referendum, that's the meeting that is potentially going to be put off until July 1st. And the, um, the, the municipal votes, I think, are being considered at the state level to be put off until July 15. It sounds um, like they're pretty close to, it sounds like that's quite likely. I, I think so. The one thing that they did not consider in that is the school votes. They did not talk, they talked about the municipal side of the voting, did not talk about the school side. But for the school not to align with the uh, municipal side would, wouldn't make much sense. But one of the difficult things is if the BVR is, uh, let's say it's July 1st and two weeks later, that's a two week window for people to do absentee ballots. And what's your guess on absentee ballots this year? Oh, it's gonna be a lot. A lot. Right, in a two week turnaround. But that's just, just for you to have in your back pocket to know that um, what we're talking about here today and whatever you decide to put forward to voters, we're still planning on the 14th for the BVR, but my guess is it's gonna be after that. Okay. All right. Uh, what are the thoughts of the board? Are we ready to propose this budget as it stands? Any comment? I'm all set. Nancy, you're shaking your head. No, I'm fine. 
Somebody can just make a motion. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve the superintendent's budget. All right. Can I'll, I get a second? Thank you, Travis. Travis. I'll, sec you. I'll second it. That's Becky. Thank you, Becky. All right. I will do the roll call. Becky Beal. Approved. Linda Corliss. Approved. Travis Dwyron. Approved. Rebecca Hopper. Approved. Denise Mallett. Yes. Lynn Manley. Approved. Nancy Newbert. Approved. Joanne Potter. Approved. And me, Estrita Schaefer, approved. So I have a 9 nine zero. -oh. Yep. So thank you for all of your work through this season. This has not been the easiest way to go about it. Uh, I think it's great that we're we're on track, no matter what the decision comes out to be in the timing. And I think that um, I feel like a 3.4% overall increase is something that uh, even with the kinds of conditions that we're seeing, that people will understand that it was a 1.26 actual increase on our expenditure side, which was below what our fixed costs were, which means we had to, to remove a lot of stuff to get this budget to where it is today. So thank you for your uh, for your support. Do we also have to vote separately on adult ed and school nutrition? Yes, yep. those are okay. coming. Um, do we have I those? sent I sent everyone links to both of those budgets. They are slightly revised from last week. Let's start um, with the Delta. Perfect. Find it. Uh, and if you have any specific questions, Janice is here and Brenda's here. Which one are we going to do first? Adult um, Ed. Adult Ed? Okay. Please. Hang on. I'm, I, see, I see budget summary by category, revenue projection. Let me make sure I've shared. Yeah, I have it. The A D E D I okay. twenty one. Oh, yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, it's a separate email. Oh. Yep. Okay. Got it. Everyone? Good. Yep. And Denise, this is you're saying this is for the most part what we looked at last week, but with it, a couple of the whatever updates that we had talked about last week. Correct. We we had some updates last week. Um the medical, I believe, shifted and um, the fund balance, we, we shifted a little bit as well. Um, Denise, Brenda is asking if you can share the changes. Oh, yes, I will. Hold on, Brenda. I have so many, I have so many windows open. Holy smokes. You're, you're by yourself. You're draining the Southern Maine pipeline here. I think I <laughs> Um, I, don't, I don't dare close any of them because every time I do, I exit the meeting. Um, Steve, you'll be happy to know as the most southern southernmost board member, it is snowing here in Berlin. It is now snowing. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is snowing in West Lebanon. They look like big, wet, nasty drops. Yeah, yeah. great stuff. So we should all do virtual snow people or something or angels for <laughs> this. No, no way. <laughs> maybe we'll try. have a snow. Maybe we'll have a snow day tomorrow. <laughs> no more snow day. <laughs> <laughs> I think this uh, this this remote learning has taken care of the term snow day, possibly for life. And I'm really jealous of that, that somebody's going to do the job and not be up at 3.30 in the morning talking to Kevin Moore. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be other miserable things to think about, Steve. <laughs> yes. You still have time to change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing? <laughs> What are people laughing about? I, I said you still have time to change your mind. Oh, Trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, kind of, that's kind of ironic, Travis. I, I was I was uh after being on conference calls with a group of superintendents and then at the DOE level and so forth, I 
looked at my wife and I said, you know, I still have time to change my mind. And she started, <laughs> laugh. she started laughing. So I don't know what that meant. <laughs> you know you're going to miss us, Steve. <laughs> uh, well, it's absolutely the people that you miss, right? Yeah. There, there are certain things I'm not going to miss, but I got a list. Of, I got a stack of about 10 that I'll never miss. And I got a list of about easily 150 that I'll miss. That's a good way to go. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Right, I'm not really seeing. Not really seeing what? Well, uh, were we waiting for some changes still, or no? We, we the yep. one she shared with us is is the updated version. So yeah, we just the updated version. We just need a motion to vote on it. Yeah. Do you have any questions, or are we all clear? Yeah. I think we have to vote not only on the total amount of the budget for adult ed, the four hundred thirty-seven thousand, but also the local share to the towns of the 283. Okay. All right, do I get a motion on the total amount? I'll make the motion, this is Nancy, on the 437, 410. All right, second. I'll Radical second it, second. this is Becky. All right. I'm sorry, who said that? Becky. Thank you. Okay, so uh, roll call, Becky Beal. Approved. Linda Corliss. Approved. Travis Dwyron. Approved. Denise Mallett. Approved. Lynn Manley. Approved. Nancy Newbert. Approved. Joanne Potter. Approved. And Estrita approved. All right, what about the local portion? Did, did we miss somebody? I have eight nothing. Uh, I might have missed somebody was in. Was it? Everybody's here. Everybody. I What's approved. that? Rebecca Hopper. Yeah, I think yeah. we got everybody. Okay, yeah. thank you. I've got a list and I'm just going down alphabetically whenever I do it. Great, thank you. With myself as last. So, okay, um, what about the local portion? Do we have any motions or questions on that or motions, please? Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the 283, 680, the local portion. Thank you, Travis. How about a second? I'll second it. Thank, thank you. Becky. All right. And once again, roll call. Becky Beal. Approved. Linda Corliss. Approved. Travis Dwyron. Approved. Rebecca Hopper. Approved. Denise Mallett. Approved. Lynn Manley. <coughs> Approved. Approved. Nancy Newbert. Approved. Joanne Potter. Approved. And Mia Strita Schaefer. Approved. Awesome. So we have uh, adult ed in the books. All right. So let's Move Hello. on to uh, school nutrition. Thank you. Uh, let's see what guy... Okay, this one is also an updated version. We updated um, some medical numbers, and um, we also added some expense for summer feeding. Um, Again, one of the things we are doing for our summer school um, kids, um, we are feeding Lebanon and we were feeding the middle school and the high school. Um, and we added Berwick and North Berwick into that mix so that all the kids who are attending summer school uh, will have that same opportunity. Um, yeah, and, and so we and added a few all dollars for staffing and some dollars for food. Um, to make that happen this coming summer, assuming, of course, that we have summer school in person. I was going to say, was, sure that was my next school. question. <laughs> um, we have to, we want to, you know, it's far enough out that we want to make sure that if summer school does happen, we do have the money to to That's carry nice. on like we have. Um, so we, we made a, an estimate based on operations as normal. Um, of course, if we if it changed or we held it differently, we would we would just change and not spend that money. Okay. All right. Do I get a motion? I'm trying to find a hmm? Is it is hey, one million five forty five oh four seven? Is that the amount? That is the budget amount and the amount to the local share we were able to keep with a 0% increase at 126,000 even. So do we have to vote twice? Vote. Yes. 
Same thing. All right. right. So well, can we do? The, I'll do the motion for the for the budget, the one million five forty five oh forty seven. Okay, great. Thank you. Try and a second. Thank you. And for the vote, Rebecca Beal. Approved. Linda Corliss. Approved. Travis Dwyron. Approved. Rebecca Hopper. Approved. Denise Mallet. Approved. Lynn Manley. Approved. Nancy Newbert. Approved. Uh, Joanne Potter. Approved. Estrita Schaefer, approved. Okay. Um, now for the local portion. Can I get a motion? Um, this is Becky. I'll make a motion to approve the 126,000 for the local share. Thank you. Can I get a second, please? I'll second it, Travis. Thank you, Travis. All right, vote. Uh, Becky Beal. Approve. Linda Corliss. Approved. Travis Dwyron. Approved. Rebecca Hopper. Approved. Denise Mallet. Approved. Lynn Manley. Approved. Nancy Newbert. Approved. Joanne Potter. Approved. And Espirito Schaefer approved. Okay. Well, I would like to thank all of you for your help this budget season. You all have made it a very easy season, even given all of the struggles we're having. So um, thanks to all of you for your help. Thank and, you. And I think that uh, a huge shout out to the food service department. Indeed. Um, and a huge shout out to uh, Abby Pelletier, who is just knocking it out of the park. She's awesome. Okay, I absolutely agree. All right, um, SRRF consideration of approval. Let me just, um, so, I shared a letter with everybody. I'm going to reshare it right now, though, as an update. So it's different than what's attached to the agenda? Oh, excuse me, it is. That's right. If you go down to the bottom of the agenda and click on the link, thank you for the reminder. Uh, Sue Austin, while people are looking to get on to that document, yep. um, we also need to, under other, we need to get a vote on the on the remote learning, and that's got to show up in the minutes, remember? Okay. Yeah. So last week we did a share just about a letter that um, Astrida wrote for, <laughs> <laughs> for the commissioner regarding our remote learning, so that was all in the minutes of the of the meeting. Um, but we, we need actually for the board to approve what we're presenting. So if I could just get someone to make a motion to approve what we shared last week, um, and then we can send it off in the minutes. Why didn't we share last week? So it was just the whole, it was just the whole piece about what we're doing for remote learning. Remember, I kind of just went through a rundown of everything. Oh yeah. Okay. And I believe it got inserted into the minutes. So you should be able to see that. Okay, so I think I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we've got one more person to get onto the document, but I can start talking about it probably. So the- First, I get it. Just, Can we get a, a yes or no? Uh, can I get oh, somebody to make no. a motion about the uh, remote learning? This oh, is I'll, make a, I'll make a motion that we approve the plan for remote learning in the meeting uh, minutes of April 2nd. Thank you, perfect. Second? second. I'll second that, so it's Nancy. Okay. okay. Nancy. All right, uh, so Rebecca Beal. Approved. Linda Corliss. Approved. Travis Dwyron. Approved. Rebecca Hopper. Approved. Denise Mallet. Approved. Lynn Manley. Approved. Nancy Neubert. Approved. Sorry about that, Newbert. Uh, Joanne Potter. Approved. And Estrita Schaefer, approved. 
Well, we're really glad to see that you folks approve it since we've been flying it for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Sue. So on this uh, SRF, the only school revolving renovation funds, the only things that were being accepted were priority ones, health, safety, and compliance issues like roof structures, indoor, indoor air quality, uh, ADA uh, um, compliance, hazardous materials, asbestos, for instance, abatement, and other health, safety, and compliance issues. Um, the SRF is funded through the Maine Municipal Bond Bank. Um, the uh, forgiveness rate, there's a forgiveness rate on that. Our forgiveness rate is something like 59.2% 59 or somewhere in there. Um, we, so our total, we wrote a total of $1,803,265 worth of projects. That's the asbestos abatement at the middle school that will complete that building. We also wrote for three sprinkler systems, one to complete Hanson School, the parts that were not done in, in the 94 edition. <clears throat> After the 94 edition, um, we also wrote for Hussey and for North Berwick Elementary School. The award of the grant by the State Department would be $1,069,516 and the loan to be repaid locally would through local taxes would be $733,749. It's a 0% interest loan, 10 years uh, to pay that off. So the annual cost to local taxpayers would be $73,000. $374.90. We're projecting that that could begin, that those payments could begin in September of 2021. At this time, uh, in my conversation with the commission. Oh, he froze. We're getting really close to six o'clock. Yeah. I know. I've already sent an, a message out to Scott to let him know that we're probably a little behind. Okay. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I may jump, like I might jump over to that meeting and come back. I don't, Steve's frozen in space, so I don't, I don't know what to do about that right now. This, um, this sounds like a pretty um, decent bargain. It really is. I mean, basically we're, we're 52%. Oh, he's, uh, he's calling me. So hold on. Would you like to get on this way? Get a power outage, so if you hold me near oh. me. Oh, oh, yeah, power outage. Okay. How convenient. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, can you hear him if he talks? Go ahead, Steve. Yes. Can you hear me if I speak through my phone to Sue's phone? Yes. Okay. Yes. Should we and turn him up a little? Apparently, we had a snowflake hit the wrong line, I guess. <laughs> okay, so um, the total. Grant award is one million sixty nine thousand five hundred sixteen dollars. Seven hundred thirty three thousand seven forty nine would be the local taxes to repay. That's uh, slightly more than seventy three thousand a year for ten years at zero percent interest. The current schedule is that we would begin repayment of that loan in September of twenty one. My guess is it may not be till September of twenty two at this point because if the vote. This has to be a separate article for consideration at the BBR and also on uh, at the vote. If we don't have a vote until July 15th, we will not be able to do any of these projects this summer. More than likely, will not because it takes, for instance, just the asbestos abatement. It's about a four to five week project plus. Is three weeks that you have to do air purification after that, air quality testing. So uh, that, that means that we would not have time to get that done this summer. And we believe that that's going to be the case more than likely with the sprinkler systems as well. So in my conversation with the commissioner yesterday, I asked if they would consider moving the SRRFs off from an 18-month schedule to a... Uh, instead of one and a half years, two and a half years 
at this point because of timing of some of these projects. They, they, they can't take place while kids are in school. So we'll see what the result of that is. Um, I, I would need uh, a street or I would need a, a motion by someone from the board if, that, if they're so inclined to uh, put the SRF on the, on the um, ballot. Oh, on the ballot. All right. Can I get a motion to put the SRF on the ballot? This is Becky. I'll make a motion to put the SRF on the ballot. Thank you. A second. Anyone? I'll, I'll second it. This is Nancy. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Uh, Rebecca Beal. Approved. Linda Corliss. Approved. Travis Dwyron. Approved. Rebecca Hopper. Approved. Denise Mallett. Approved. Lynn Manley. Approved. Nancy Newbert. Approved. Joanne Potter. Approved. And Mia Strita Schaefer. Approved. Okay. You know, just a reminder that any of these projects that we uh, complete will be um, projects that we do not have to roll into the larger construction projects that we're looking for in the not too distant future. Okay. Okay. All right. Employment. Do we have any issues? Why any not? news? Yeah. Yes, I have uh, three things to talk to you about. Um, Stu, do I still have you or did I lose? No, you have me, but I have a bit of an issue. Um, I need to jump into the other meeting because the candidate's going to be waiting for me. So can you call Jen? Or call Jenny. Yeah, anyway. Thank you. I apologize. Yes, I'll call Jen. Yeah, call Jen. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, you guys. I just don't, I don't want him to be sitting in there going, hey, hello, anybody home? This puts a new spin on the game of telephone. <laughs> oh my goodness, totally. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna mute myself and move on to a different call and it may make me leave, but I will come back. Steve, Steve, are you there? Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so in a you're, talk you're, you're talking about employment. Okay, yes. Can I get a rigatoni with meatballs and crazy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me see if I can run down through three that, that we have. Who, who would have thought? <laughs> all right, first of all, um, I received a notification from Elaine Chamberlain. She said, Ready to inform us. She's a teacher at uh, Hubby, which will be retiring at the end of this school year. Uh, it is of June 30th. And then my wife's bringing me a candle so I can see in here. Uh, <laughs> that she has enjoyed many, many years of teaching in Berber and has enjoyed immensely uh, with the working with her colleagues and students. So I need a Motion. Steve, you're, you're very mumbly. We can yeah. hardly hear you. Very garbled. Okay. Uh, let me try this. Hi, can you hear me better now? So far, I think so. Glenn, can you hear me? I can. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell people what I'm saying, what I'm saying about Elaine? Did you hear that it's Elaine Chamberlain that is retiring? She's the teacher at Hubby School. I believe, was it 20 years? Uh, I don't, it doesn't say the number on, on her letter, but she's been at, at the Hubby School for a significant amount of time. She was a teacher when I was there, so. <laughs> <laughs> So wow. Yeah. <laughs> she, was a, she was a teacher there when I was hired 30 years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. Been there a long time. Do we do these all together so can we can yes, make a motion? Because we need to, if we, if we can, okay. Steve, we'll I, would need, I would need a motion on this. I'll make okay. a motion to approve with regret. All right, a second. I'll second. 
Okay, go real quick. What? Yes, Becky second. Yep. The motion. Becky Peel. Do you approve? Yeah. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Linda Corliss. Yes, approve. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. Astrida Schaefer. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the second one that I have for you is uh, Lorna Henley. She's a gifted, she's in the Excel program. She's writing this letter to inform us that she'll be retiring at the end of the school year. Thoroughly enjoyed her two years here in the district. Uh, Sound is bad again. Amazed by uh, and, and amazed and will long remember the caring community spirit that is the salient characteristic of the district. I need a motion for her. All right. Can I get a motion to accept the resignation? What was the name again? Lorna Henry. If you're ever out on Pink Bunk Pond and you see somebody out there walking on water, it's Lorna uh, I'll make a motion to accept her resignation. Can I get a second, I'll, please? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, Becky Beal. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne yes. Potter. Yes. Estrita Schaefer. Yes. Okay, thank you for that one. The third one I'm just going to share with you. And it reads uh, it's to Aaron Watson, it's from Kevin Jackson, and it reads that uh, he wanted to be able to have the conversation in person, but felt like this was not a good time. Uh, he had been uh, as a coach at the boys' basketball varsity level for five years, and he's been there more than enough time to turn the program around. Despite the off-court accolades, the results on the court were You don't need to vote on that. Okay. okay. All right, then um, the last thing we have before one more chance of input is the Ben Chase Fellowship. Um, okay, so Ben Chase is in the uh, Multiple Pathways program, and he received a fellowship uh, to work um, uh, it, at Noble, while he's at his Noble High School job, he'll be doing uh, some training, uh, further training on how to reach students who, have, who are off track or who are disaffected by education. And he, his fellowship is, I think it's like 20 weeks. So this is something that he went out and thought and landed. And we're very proud of him for continuing to um, find new ways to reach as many of our students as possible. Okay, great. Okay, one more shot. Everybody in the public who's watching or listening for public comment. All that public out there. Yeah, well, 
Um, I, this is Denise. I would actually, I'd just like to say that uh, sort of unrelated to the fellowship, um, having seen him in action as a teacher with a variety of kids, I can't think of somebody who's more deserving. He's a, he's an exceptional um, educator, mentor, uh, part of that community. So I'm thrilled that he's getting that, uh, the fellowship. Thank you, Denise. That's nice. Do we have any any calls, Jen? Somebody. Okay. So you heard my phone ring before. Yeah. Well, that was yours. Okay. That, that's the work phone. Um, there is a message, but I'm not sure if it pertains to this or something else. So. Do you want to check it offline? Yes. Let me just mute myself and then I'll check. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Board members, while we're waiting for Jen, um, I've already spoken to Scott. He stepped off of that call. And as soon as we all get together, I'll give you a quick prep on the procedures. And then we'll I'll text him and he'll join us from there. Okay. It was just a hang up call. OK. All right. In that case, can I get a motion for adjournment? Can I just ask a question? Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, okay, so we've approved the budgets, and usually we have to sign the budgets in the same sequence. Is there yes. going to be a way to do that? So what we will do, great question, thank you for asking that, is once the documents are complete and prepared, we will bring them to central office. We will lay them out uh, on the counter in specific order. And we'll have people uh, si uh, sign up for a time to, we'll have you folks sign up for a time to stop at central office and go down the row and sign all the papers. And then we'll deliver them through Drummond with them. Does that work? That works. I think we're thinking about next Friday. Next Thursday, Thursday, Thursday to sign. Thursday, Thursday to sign. Okay. Okay. And you'll see one of our bright, shiny faces so that you know what you need to sign. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Well, I'll make we a motion. Have we, back, on, have we heard back from Jen whether that message was? That was, Jen, a, that was a hang up. It was, it was a hang up. It was just a hang up. Okay. Yep. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Second. Who second? Okay. Thanks. Hello. Was there a second? I second. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> somebody, somebody second. Oh, yeah. You did. I, I Joanne, I second. Okay. Thank you. Rebecca Beal. Bye. Yes. Linda <laughs> Yes. Travis, Travis Byron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. That's Trudy Schaefer, yes. See you uh, in a few minutes. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you, folks. Have a good have a good night. Good luck with the process. Thank you.